everybody. Welcome back to the world of me. My name's Cougar, and this is another episode from the Amazon Review Series. Uh, as you can see, we're in the kitchen again, and obviously that is because of this box right here. And uh, let's go ahead and turn it up so you can kind of see something. Now, you, as you can see right there, this is by Kitchen Arm. Uh, and, of course, there's the model number, like it says. Let's go ahead and open the box, and we'll show you what's inside. All right, so here we are. As you can see right here, this is a bread maker. Uh, this happens to be one of the highest rated and I believe also most purchased bread makers on Amazon. Uh, now, I picked this one specifically. It wasn't the highest, uh, but I picked this one because it had what I felt was the most versatility. So it has the ability to do smaller to larger stuff as well as uh, the type of stuff that it can do. Uh, there's a there was seemed to be a much bigger range um, It was in like the 20s or something like that of the different things that it was capable of doing I think like 27 So let's go ahead and open the box itself pull the stuff out and see what we've got inside And then I think we're also going to go ahead and try and make our first round of uh, of bread here or Whatever I decide to make. I mean it does make a few different things as I understand all right, so here we go. This is everything that I got in the package. Uh, you, of course, got the bread, the bread maker here, and as you can see, it is a nice stainless steel with black accenting. Uh, makes it fairly nice. It also will make it a lot easier to clean up. Comes with some accessories here. It comes with uh, three of these uh, graduated cups, so you can, of course, measure out all your stuff with those, as well as it also came with three of these uh, little. Uh, measuring spoon type things and uh, it looks like there's one on either side. They all seem to be roughly the same size as I can tell Just like the cups uh, You do have this little hook thing which I'm sure we'll find out what that's for here a little bit later on And then we have these here uh, And these I believe are the kneading uh, Kind of paddles if that's what you want to call them. I uh, hook those in there and uh, They turn around and knead the bread for you uh, now turn here and take a look at the top and as you can see there is quite a bit going on here we have multiple buttons uh, let's see we've got menu uh, loaf size dough there's the time up and down uh, homemade uh, crust color uh, then the start stop and pause button as well you have all of these okay yeah 29 different types of uh, like basically breads and whatnot. You have basic white uh, all the way through homemade bread. You've got the baking, the kneading, fermenting. Uh, looks like you can make yogurt and jam as well as pasta. The pasta part will be really nice because if any of you have seen the uh, Bespoke Post series, I do have a pasta maker. Uh, but of course, the mixing the pasta, I got to do by hand. Now I've got this that I can use and I can make my own pasta with this. Uh, we've got, uh, well, there's there's beer, honey, banana, of course, those are different bread types, pumpkin bread, oatmeal bread uh, as well, and a whole lot of others there. So you guys can kind of check those out. You can pause the video if you want to check them all out, or you can, of course, go to the link down below that is to this on the Amazon site. Now on the inside, we'll open it up, and as you can see, we've got the little... Uh, tin here that is used for doing the mixing the cooking etc uh, obviously the pin down there is what the little uh, dough hooks go into and sorry about this we're trying to get it to focus there we go and as you can see there this goes right there and you can see the flat side and there is the flat side of that down there so this would just sit on there just like that I believe and uh, has a little bit of a little bit of play there, but um, anyhow, I think that's how you do it. We'll check out the instructions here in just a second to make sure we do everything. Uh, one thing I do want to know is I did get an email from the company, and the company did uh, give me some instructions. One of the things it said is before I try to use this, I should run it on I believe like a low setting. I need to check that out. So that is something that we're going to go ahead and have to do. Uh, now, with the instruction stuff, we've got lots of things here. We, of course, have the 
uh, warranty card, very simple right there. It has the uh, serial number right there, and then it has some uh, instructions as to you know what's covered, how, and what to do to um, you know get your warranty coverage. Now the next thing we have here is well their little letter, uh, and they've got some uh, information here. First thing that it says is one month free return or free replacement. So obviously part of the warranty, two year warranty. It uh, has a lifetime cloud recipe service, so uh, you can actually access additional recipes for different breads and whatnot online. They give you that. Um, that's actually part of what's in here as well. And it goes on and on. There's uh, about 10 uh, different things on here. So uh, you've got all that in there. And of course, then it's signed by uh, one of the people from uh, Kitchen Arm. Then we have a couple of books here, and the first one is, uh, there you go, Smart Bread Maker, and it's the basic user manual. Uh, of course, this doesn't look too awful basic because there's quite a bit to it. Uh, it tells you quite a bit of information in here, different types of things about the doughs. Um, obviously, you had all of those uh, possibilities up here, and uh, this looks like it's giving you a lot of that. Uh, in here as to some of the corrective actions and whatnot. So, for example, yeast bread menus there, it says. And uh, then we've got some other things here, a little bit sourdough starter menu. So, you know, if you want to uh, do your different kinds, I would love to try some sourdough with this. I do know you have to start that up because it is fermented. Uh, and things like that. So, pretty nice. Um, lots of information, as you can see how to uh, take things apart, how to make sure things are locked together. That, of course, is one of the paddles. So we'll need to make sure to uh, get things locked in there properly. Uh, we'll make sure to follow that when we go to start using this. Uh, and then the next thing is you have the recipe book. And this will be great because this is probably what I'm going to use to uh, do a lot of things. Uh, I got some some uh, different types of flowers and things like that that I want to try out and this is going to be great I mean look at all these things on here these different kinds of breads and everything we've got wow just tons of them in here um, and they're different kinds of things I all these are yeast breads right here it looks like and then this next one we've got uh, uh, baking powder bread uh, and then you've got uh, non-bread so you've got the pasta egg noodles strawberry jam blueberry jam so you can make your different jams um, yogurt is in there uh, as well i also have another thing that does yogurt too so that'll be nice um, yeah, and then even the rice wine so you can actually ferment your own uh, well rice wine commonly known as sake and uh, i have a few friends that are pretty big into that and then you've got some homemade stuff like the potato bread and oh, the Polish babka bread. And uh, a lot of people know about that. So, so there we go. We've got tons of that. We've got the measurements for everything in here. Um, I will say the uh, writing is a bit small on here, just so you guys know. Um, for those of you who wear glasses or anything, um, you will need to pay attention to that. Obviously has lots of useful little tips, as it says for whatever you're making. There's the French bread one, and you can see all the useful tips that are in here. So, you know, kind of pay attention to that, but obviously you're gonna wanna use your own little flair for something like that. So let's go ahead and get this prepped. And uh, when I come back, uh, we're gonna go ahead and try and make something. We'll find out what it is once I get it to that point. I haven't decided just yet, but let's see what this thing can do. And, uh, you know, from there, you guys can kind of decide whether or not you think this is worth it. Uh, I will say this was not super expensive. It was not hundreds of dollars or anything like that. Um, I believe it was well under $100, uh, if I remember correctly. So uh, it, it, of course, does depend because prices do vary. So I can't give you an exact amount. But uh, yeah, let's uh, get this prepped and uh, we'll be right back. All right, guys, so this is all ready. Uh, it's set up to um, get well, we're set up to cook. I have the, uh, the little mixer in there. You're supposed to make sure that's seated all the way down to the bottom. 
Uh, normally when you'd worry about that is after you've cooked in this before, make sure there's no crumbs or anything that are keeping it from seeding all the way down. Uh, now I've got all my ingredients here. Um, slight variation, I'm using honey rather than uh, sugar. Uh, I prefer to stay away from sugar if I can. Uh, but we have the basic ingredients. This is the basic white bread recipe. This is the first one that they suggest that you make just to become familiar with the machine, making sure that the machine's working properly. Um, this is the one that's kind of uh, basically the most foolproof. Uh, so we have our ingredients according to the recipe there. Uh, we are making the one and a half pound size, which is what it suggests to go with. So I'm just kind of following along what they suggest to go uh, with to start. And uh, so first thing we do is we add our wet ingredients, which is the water here. And uh, I actually used the cups, the little small cups to measure this out because this large one does not measure as accurately as those do. And then we've got our olive oil, and this is uh, two tablespoons. So the large, the large cup on this side is a tablespoon. The small one on the back there is a teaspoon. Um, though you may still need to have a regular set of measuring cups for this, uh, just because some of these things are half or quarter measurements. So go ahead and put the olive oil in there. I'm using, well mine happens to be extra virgin olive oil, uh, but uh, they do say that you can use other vegetable type oils uh, if you so choose. Uh, now the next thing we have is the honey. Uh, the honey I am using my measuring, my regular measuring ones because it is a partial measurement. So we've got one and a half. Um, now the next thing we'll put in, we start with our dry ingredients. First we've got our flour. Now the flour, they do suggest that you go by weight rather than by volume, um, just because of compaction and whatnot. Uh, this is... Uh, 433 grams of flour and I am just so you know I am doing this wrong um, one of the things they said straight off and I totally forgot was to add your ingredients outside of the cooker primarily so you don't dump anything around the sides and get it there by the heating element so I've already kind of goofed up in that aspect uh, now one thing I'm doing is I'm spreading the flour around so it covers the water up. Uh, reason being, they don't want the yeast, which next is our salt. And then our yeast is last. They say your yeast should not touch anything wet. Uh, first thing it's going to do this is going to uh, start mixing and stuff, and they don't want the yeast to activate until after it's already started to mix. So we'll close our lid, and I'm now plugging it in. So there we go. And go for our menu. We're on number 29. This is going to be a little difficult probably to read. And we're on number one. It's at one and a half pounds already. I'm sure that's hard to read there, guys. I'll try my best to get it to focus. There we go. So we've got uh, the loaf is one and a half pounds. Again, uh, we have it at medium, and it's already ready to go. So it's already set where we want it. We can, of course, adjust those things using loaf size, dough, etc. Um, but the first thing we do is then hit the start button. And as you can see right here, it says kneading. And it will go through a few different things. It, this is the first time it's going to knead everything together. And I don't know if you can hear that. It does like a little spin. See if you can see down in there. You can kind of see the 
the flower getting kind of tossed around a little bit as it spins. It does, doesn't do a constant spin, it's just a quick spurt. It'll go through all this. As it goes through, it'll do its thing. It'll sit there. It'll rise when it needs to, but now it's basically hands off. We're supposed to be done in three hours and 12 minutes. We'll come back after that's done. It'll probably be cool by the time I finally uh, get to it and record the rest of this. But uh, again, looks like this is going to be really nice. I make a lot of custom breads with this, especially, I think, especially since we can do things like making jams and stuff as well. Uh, so we'll see this in a minute and we'll wrap this up. All right, everybody, it's all done. Uh, the thing just goes back to the setting that it was previously on, and this is what we're looking at. It's been a fair amount of time. I have left it set. Uh, it's cooled off. see the loaf of bread there. And somehow pretty clean little bit in the bottom right there. Not too bad. Now as you can see the hole right there, that's of course the little uh, spatula thing, the little mixer. And that's actually what this is for. Put this in on a little bit of an angle. Pull it out. There we go. Not too bad, didn't make too big of a hole. Um, in the instructions it showed that it may actually be uh, a bigger hole. That wasn't too bad. It just literally kind of came straight out like that. So obviously it's not going to be perfect like in a, in a loaf pan. But. And then uh, in the instructions, they talk about cutting it horizontally, um, because obviously, generally speaking, it's going to be like this. Now, I think this fell a little bit. I think normally this would be a little bit higher, so I may need to adjust uh, the amount of wheat or what have you. Not wheat, but uh, yeast that's in this and let's go ahead and there we go it's our first first loaf and first pieces of homemade bread using the bread maker pretty nice um, obviously these are pretty wide that's a little over four inches across uh, so nice large size uh, actually maybe even a little little bit bigger even than maybe the ones that you get at the store the pre-made stuff uh, but it's very very nice uh, I'm gonna have to practice my cutting maybe get these a little thinner but there we go so if you guys want to check this out you can, uh, of course, go down there in the description below. There, of course, will be the link to this on the Amazon site. Also, while you're down there, don't forget to check out the social media and the PayPal link if you want to help out the channel. And uh, that'll do it for me today, guys. This is uh, the world of me and another episode from the Amazon review series. My name's Cougar, and I would like to wish you all a good day, and I will see you later. Bye.